commercial was done by, by one of the big LA shops um, that had two salt shakers on, or a salt and pepper shaker on a kitchen countertop. And they actually squished, they were squishy. Everything before that in computer animation had been rigid, you know, plastic. And these two actually jumped around like little Warner Brothers characters. And it was great. And I just, you know, like, how did they do that? And it was a brand new technique called lattice deformation, where you could take any object, like a salt shaker or a toaster oven, and put it in a lattice or a box. And then rather than moving every point in the object, you only had to move the points on the box. And they would twist the object inside it. So you could take a very complex object and make it squishy. Um, and I thought, okay, that's how I'm going to tell my stories. You know, but I knew then that I needed characters that would be so simple that you could animate them by putting them inside a little box and then animating the little box uh, so that they couldn't have arms, they couldn't have legs, uh, and because of the complexity, they couldn't have hair and they couldn't have clothes. Um, so I bought, this is in 1991, bought my own computer animation system. I had quit my job and set up my own little company. Um, and actually to buy that first computer animation system, my parents took out a second mortgage on their house so that I could get that first system and get going and started playing around with, okay, what am I going to put in the box to make it squishy? And I made a little man that looked like he was made out of Nerf, a little Nerf ball guy, and got him kind of moving. And that was kind of cute. Um, and then I started playing around with a candy bar. And I made a little chocolate candy bar, um, put kind of big goofy eyes on him, and the eyes, each eye was also in a little box. The eyes were really squishy, um, and that gave him his expressiveness, and then had this little candy bar bending around on the countertop. And I'd just gotten married, and my wife walked by uh, our spare bedroom and saw the image on the screen and said, you know, moms are going to be mad if you make their kids fall in love with candy bars. And I thought, ah, good point okay, what wouldn't moms be mad about their kids falling in love with? And the very next thing that popped into my head was a cucumber. So I took the eyes off the candy bar, made a little cucumber, you know, made them green, put the eyes on the cucumber, and then looked at him and thought, okay, he's kind of goofy, I think, so I'm going to give him one tooth and a big grin. Um, and then just, you know, just his expression, just like, oh, okay, I think I know how he would act. So I did a 12-second piece of animation that was on a tile kitchen countertop that actually looked a lot like that old TV commercial I'd seen with the salt and pepper shaker. Um, and we panned down the countertop, and you see a bowl, a ceramic bowl, and all of a sudden this little cucumber sticks his head up over the edge of the bowl, hops up to the camera, and grins. Just pops this big, goofy, one-tooth grin. And when I played it for the first time, this little you know, 10-second clip, I thought, he's alive. You know, there's my character. You know, kids can relate to this guy. And also, I know what he'll do in different situations. You know, if he gets stranded on a desert island, I know how he'll act. You know, if he gets stuck in a runaway train, I know how he'll act. I can see his personality just through his face. Um, but he was alone, and it was not good. And he was tall and skinny, so I thought, okay, he needs a sidekick who's short and round. And it's an Abbott and Costello or Laurel and Hardy thing. So uh, I made a tomato. I thought, okay, cucumber and tomato, that's really cute. Um, but I didn't want them, you know, and I was thinking about what, what are we going to name them? You know, what, what do you name these guys? Is it, is it Kookie the Cucumber and Tommy the Tomato? I thought, no, that's way too cute. I don't want to do anything that cute. So I wanted really, really kind of regular names um, and, and actually made a list on paper of what are all the really regular names we could come up with for these two guys and settled on Bob the Tomato and Larry the Cucumber. You know, the first thing I did was a 10-second clip of Larry just to see if he would come to life and if he could engage and tell a story. And that worked great. I was hoping that that would, you know, help us fund the whole thing, but it didn't. So then I realized that we needed to do something longer. So Mike and I sat down and said, okay, let, we need to do like a, you know, two-minute film to really show that we can do this. So that was, you know, the inspiration for the first short that really launched VeggieTales. All right. Veggie Tales promo, take 38. Okay, get this. All the citizens of the kitchen come together. Fruits, vegetables, small kitchen appliances. Regardless of species, color, or brand name, they all come together with one purpose. And that purpose... Hey, Bob! Have you seen my plastic wind-up lobster? Not now. 
That purpose is to create the most fantastic Christian children's series anyone has ever imagined. A show bursting with positive values, filled with lighthearted stories, songs, and educational materials. A show so bold, so innovative, so earth-shattering, it could only be called one thing. Veggie Tales! Oh, here it is. Just a minute, not so fast. Before this nonsense goes any further, I just want everyone to know that I was against it from the start. Isn't that right, dear? That's right, he was. Yes, but when that pickle came up to me, I... It's, it's a cucumber, dear. It... Oh, yes, whatever. As I was saying, that cucumber came up to me and asked me what I thought we should do this weekend. Oh, I suggested a Caesar salad might be nice. We hadn't done one of those in a while. But no, they decided to do a television show instead. I mean, really. You put vegetables in salads. You use them as side dishes. Occasionally, you might use them as an aesthetically pleasing garnish. But you never, never put vegetables on television. It is simply not done. Oh, I don't know. I kind of like the idea.